I'm at the news desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you got your volume off? It will be for those. push that button, and then we push that button, and then we go, oh, good morning, hello, welcome to Chandler's Coach, in the kitchen, how are you this morning, are you good? Um, we are, okay, it looks like, I don't know what it looks like, it looks like you're on a new set, and the blue screen's not working this morning, because when we um, did our live show from the kitchen last time, it was not midsummer, so the sun was at a different height at this time of day. And today is going to be a bright, hot day. There's not a cloud in the sky. And what that means is every time we open the curtains, the cameras adjust because it's so bright outside, and I go into the night. <laughs> so we've we've kind of kind of given up, kind of. Um, but I do want to show you out the window. So we'll do that in a minute. We'll wait till everyone's here, and then I'll show you out there because it's um, it's it's a it's a very busy place at the moment out on the back deck because I've got my fowls preserving happening out there, and there's a batch already out this morning, and I wanted to you know have it beautifully sitting in the background, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so we've very quickly popped the kitchen stools behind us with a with a token pot plant and some of the fabric that we're going to have a look at today, and just a cute little technique of what we're going to do. I did not get to pick up my new glasses on Friday. I'm sorry. And they would have gone with my t-shirt. Um, very, very cash this morning too. Look at the, it's a news reader. Look, you've got this and then you've got the work pants underneath because as soon as, um, as soon as we've had a lovely little short cuppa with you, we'll be heading out to do a whole heap of watering and things before it gets too hot this morning. It's not until you hit three or four really hot days, I think, that your next level of consciousness that you've moved to the country, onto land, um, yeah, it, then you, you hit a new level of it's like, okay, I'm now responsible for all of the trees and roses and the vegetable garden and everything all in one hit that need watering twice a day at the same time off tanks. <laughs> Who's in the building this... Oh, you're all here. I've got you all out of bed again, haven't I? Maybe you are still in bed with a cuppa. Good morning, Susan Merton. Welcome. Good morning, Bernadette. Oh, Diana, hello to you. Down under your funny thing. I loved your beautiful new little project you're doing with, um, with the hearts. It's gorgeous. If you don't follow Pacao's quilts, why don't you? Everyone should follow the best Costa Rican um, quilt shop, uh, patchwork. Well, I won't say quilt shop, do I, Diana? I say beautiful, home-based, friendly, lovely patchwork teacher. Uh, it is, yes, okay, it, it may not be in English all the time, but you can always, she's the most amazing person, and her English is faultless. So if you have any questions while you're watching, just ask. But please do follow Diana on Paco Quilts. I love her. Um, the rain. Good morning, Louise. Good morning. You're an early person, Lou, aren't you? <laughs> Good morning, Del, Karen. Um, Bernadette, I'm so pleased you are here this morning with Elizabeth. <gasps> How are things up your way, mate? Are you good? Are you dry? Did you get rain? I need all this information. I have a lot of hand sewing to do this week, so maybe I'll just ring everyone and sit on the phone for the week. Susan, good morning. Thank you. Um, Carol Newton's here. Um, buddy, those, uh, the Waratah, the big Waratah panels came in. So yours is sitting on my desk to send out. So um, maybe touch base with me if I've missed anything else. I think you've got one more thing to go and we're good. And hello from the UK. How are you this morning? Are you good? I should say this evening. I hope things are warming up for you. Linda Phillips is here with Donna. Hello. Hey, I missed Tash all week. I didn't, did I pop in? Maybe I popped in once. Missed the whole lot. It's been a very busy week. Glenda, hello. Hello, Valerie. We are not featuring your applique uh, essentials pack this morning, Valerie. I'm very sorry, but I've got three new ones for you. Jill, hello. Blue Mountains. Karen Calvis here with Cheryl. Oh, both my Cheryls are in. 
Anna Maria, hello, welcome, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sounding way more perky than I actually am, may I just add. Um, Jeanette, Jenny, Lois, Kate's here. Oh, you crossed my mind about two o'clock this morning. I was trying to work out how I was going to make something with my new overlocker. And I still call it my new overlocker, Kate. Isn't that hilarious, even though I've had it two years? Because to me, it's still new. <coughs> so we must catch up. Um, Rosemary Brooks can't stay as wedding anniversary today. Oh, congratulations, Rosemary. That's awesome. Ours is coming, ours is coming up. Um, Barb, Rose, Christine, Joe. Oh, you're all here. Morning, Nancy Cook. Tracy Fisher's in the building. <laughs> um, Jane Pixley, how are you? Deb, Wilkie, did you, you got my apology note, everything, sorry about that. Um, but you've got your goods, I'm hoping now. If not, they're not far away. Um, Janet Tracy, okay, have I nearly caught up? I think it's still cold in the UK. I think I nearly have. Fiona, don't know how long I'll last. <sighs> After a night shift, you know, we probably could have chatted a lot if you could talk during work this week. <laughs> because I was up a couple of nights with no sleep. Oh, I'm four minutes from sending you an email. <laughs> sure, send me an email. I don't mind. Yvonne Collinson's here. Send your stuff for you, Pauline. Oh, goodness, you're all here. Tracy, Tina. Tina? Okay. Shall we? I'm just also thrilled you're up. Rhonda Barry, buddy, how are you? You good? I'm thrilled you're all up because if you, and I know a lot of you are Victorians actually, besides being English, Costa Rican, American, <laughs> all of that, because uh, it's going to be a hot one. So, and we haven't had the heat that you guys in the New South Wales have had and in Western Australia and, and everything. So you've got to be up early. Get all that stuff done outside. If you have to nick to the supermarket, do it straight after the show because then today is an inside sew and cook day. Where are you going, Robbie? Because it's my house, I can go where I like. Are we going to open the curtains? Should we just do that now so that people don't think I'm... I'm Sheepers, I am lit up like Fort Knox because we tried to set up all these cameras. After the show, I'll just see white rings all day from the ring lights. You ready? Ready? Outside. So I'm like, oh, da -da! And see, then I go into the dark. But out here, I'll go and get one for you. This is my, um, oh, I'll shut the curtains again. Isn't that gorgeous out there? Look at it. Uh-huh. But the camera says no. No, no, no. This is my, my one of my babies out this morning. I uh, get a big thrill out of pattern jars. I don't know why I look. So I'm towards the end of the peaches. We're just, I actually... <laughs> I said on YouTube on our video that I was at the end of the peaches and then I went to the fridge <laughs> in, the, in, in the outside storage fridge cool room thing and I had a box to go so I've got more to do today but that's actually exciting because I can mix them up with a couple of other things that I've got here like mangoes and things to make some chutney today so that's what's going on outside and it's great popping the fowlers outside um, because you refill each time if you haven't done it before. I'm sure a lot of you have, or your mums did, or your grandmothers, but when the water has finished, I'm able to empty out the phallus unit with a water bath out and reuse that water really effectively out on the deck and for the garden, so it works really well. So that's, it's been, it's a huge week of preserving. If you haven't had a look yet, or you don't subscribe yet, and uh, haven't got your email, but the new... Um, bake demo for February for our 2024 calendar is up on our Chandler's Cottage YouTube channel. So you can pop onto YouTube and search Chandler's Cottage or you can do the, 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 the fancy schmancy way and put at Lisa Chandler Designs and it will bring it up, either of those because we renamed it. Um, and you'll see under the playlist for the 2024 calendar, the make is up for the Chinese fan wall hang. I call it a wall hanging now because some of you have done a beautiful job and you've put them up on your wall. But, uh, I called it a table runner, so which, whatever you want to do with it. So that one's up and also the bake is up because we did the egg sponge cakes this week. 
um, and I popped that up. So they are both there and I'll have to apologise. I actually caught a glimpse of it when I was in there playing with my YouTube channel yesterday and I look absolutely shocking on that. It's, it's really bad and it came off two nights of no sleep after um, and I'm, I'm, I am sure a lot of you have done it before having a cortisone injection in your hip for your bursitis. And I can do cortisone. I have done cortisone for a long time, but man, they put a lot in. And so I spiraled. I, I, I functioned very highly for two days, but there was no sleep. And so absolutely appalling. So I have to try and redeem myself for the March one. It's very, very bad. Anyway, that's all up now on Morning Liz. Hello, Denise. Um, that's morning, Catherine. <laughs> um, that's all up for you now on the YouTube channel. So you've now got four. You've got two makes and two bakes. And then next month we'll be back and we'll do our Easter basket and um, the crumble cake, which that was crumble cake. Which I'm thinking we might try a few different things for the filling besides the the yummy original version with the syrup cherries in it. So we'll see. Anyway, I decided today I would do, or yesterday I would do the sensationalism statement about what we were doing today. It was really just to get you out of bed so you made the most of your Sunday, but I have found a cute little thing that is in its absolute infancy, absolute infancy, but I want to share it with you because um, I have so many thoughts about what I want to do with it. But, you might, but then you'll have your own thing you want to do with it. And I thought, I'm not going to hold it back, you know, for two, three months until I play with it. I'm going to show you now, and then you can go off and have a play too. And we can all see what we come up with. So let's do that. Why are they? Oh, yes, okay. Um, the egg, egg sponge cakes, let me just say, this, this little pack of muffin liners of what we've used for the egg sponge cakes. Sorry, I'm just going back a step. This is what we've used, um, which is the very traditional way to bake, receive, and or eat a Chinese egg sponge. Now, I talk about it a lot on YouTube. I won't bang on about it now. Um, and when we did the kits, when you buy a box kit, tell, please tell me if you didn't get one because I, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of boxes left the building without these because we have to add these in the top. So let me know if you didn't get yours. Um, probably a couple of the recent ones, if anything, but um, you get one of these to make your egg sponge cakes with because I wanted you to have the right ones. But when we bought them, of course, I had to buy way more than we needed for the kits to get them wholesale because I was new to the company and all that stuff. So I've got extras of these. So there is a new section on the website called, it's called Home and Garden, Home and Garden. I think I called it House and Garden by mistake on YouTube, Home and Garden. And it has one thing in it, <laughs> but from this it will grow. So I'm going to slowly add quite a few things to the home and garden department um, this year. So anyway, if you are buying this stuff, a kit or something, you go, oh yes, and I need muffin lines, completely on a different tangent. These little ones are in there. I love these, again, I bang on on YouTube. I love these because they're high, so you don't burn your fruit crumble tops or anything in them. So anyway, just so you know, they're there. Let's just push the fruit out of the way so they're not in the way. Okay, these are polygons or elongated octagons. I'm gonna pick a camera, any camera? How's that camera? That camera's good. So this little pack here, I can't see very well today because I'm so lit up. <laughs> <laughs> with lights. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. All right. So this little pack here has got these in. These were inspired. I mean, it's a polygon. It's, it's not, it's not, I haven't invented the wheel, but these were inspired by um, some of the, the shapes, the block shapes that I started doing sort of back away with Robert Kaufman Oriental Prints particularly oh we had like imperial window i don't know we had a few different ones i'm trying to get the light so you can see it there you go um i used to do this shape a lot and it's uh i think we've got what was it portrait windows or something in melbourne as well it's it's a lovely thing to do to cut your standard 
long or wide rectangle and then just give it that little tweak and do little cut off triangle corners on them and it just it takes it from just being a block to framing it so um, I love doing that and I've done it lots of times it started way way back with oriental window snowball blocks and things and then we went into went into rectangular ones as well so that's where this idea come from so it came from so that's that little pack that we've got and on the back there's a few little tricks and then inside I love doing this with our bag furniture and um, basic equipment stuff so that you or basic equipment tools materials and things so you've got you know you've got your instructions inside on how to use them and you know that we've got you know a few hexagon ones and I'm developing up some different ones at the moment with Danny at Epiplex for us so They've, that's all in there and you get 25 in a pack just to put that out there so with these um, we when I actually did them I confess we haven't used them that much uh, I did a little basic layer on the cover that I think looks really nice compared to um, just using standard squares or octagons or hexagons and you know I love my octagons because you get your little gaps in between and this, these open that up to more opportunities because you get a small square and a big square when you put them all together in the configuration that's on the front of the pack. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know where my brain was going the other day. I was just out in the, um, in the shop shed and I was looking, I think I was looking at these on the shelf at the same time I was looking at the Melba Twisted Knitting Bag and my brain kind of put these two things together and I thought, how can we do something really cool, again, for another feature thin strip to use on a jewellery roll, to use as a feature on a cushion, maybe down the side of a pillow slip cover. Like I just, my brain does that while I'm doing really, look quite honestly mundane things like clipping 100 Northcote Colourworks bolts um, to move them from one side to the other, which is what Susie and Jay did yesterday. There's a lot going on here. And I came up with an idea, and I tried it yesterday, like nothing like leaving it to the last minute, and it's kind of working. So we're going to do it together. I've started one, and I want to do it with you. So I thought, you know, I love trying things out for the first time with ombres because you get that beautiful shading of colour. And uh, I've got one here that I started using. So I've got some bits and pieces to show you. Not a lot today because it was all about just having a bit of fun with you and talking about new techniques and giving us all eye drops, <laughs> giving us all an idea to go off and have a run with, particularly because it's going to be a hot day. So this, this is the one that I decided to play with and you can see what I've been doing down here. So that's what I decided to play with. And this is where I'm at. Now I've got to find, because we don't have an overhead in the kitchen, I've just got to find, I think it's going to be this camera. Yes, there you go. I'm really lucky at the moment, Rob, the lag's really short so I can see that yeah. it looks all right. That is what I am doing. And we're weaving. We are putting our EPP together and we're going to weave it. The, the search word for today is weave, okay? Probably did it in purple for us to match. Look at that. So if you pop weave into the search window, if you haven't watched before, that will bring up most of the bits and pieces that I'm gonna talk about. And if they don't, look, it's not gonna bring up peaches. It might actually bring up muffin liners. I may have put that in, but that's gonna bring up the bits we're talking about. So this is where I, look, look at that. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing this and then you can have a play as well. So the great thing about these shapes is they're long. If I turn that back around here and pop that there, I'll show you where I'm up to, or how I got to this point more importantly. So with these little pieces, probably the most important thing, depending on what EPP you've got in your stash or at home at the moment, have a look at them and have a look at the size of the, the length of the sides on them for me first. So these guys are, I don't know why they're guys and not girls, but they just are. These guys are one and a quarter inches long. So you want something, you're going to want something that's got a fair bit of length in it 
Um, our octagons would be fine. You'd want, if you've got hexagons, you're going to want them to be um, at least an inch <clears throat> to get a good, I'm going to start saying it, to get a good weave with your EPP. It's the most funniest thing to put those two things together, but that's what we're going to play with. And this today is just the start. I'm, I'm, now I'm on to this. There's going to be heaps of stuff like this. Um, so these are, here, let me put my glasses back on. Am I wrong? One and a, no, one and a quarter long. So I'm working with a weave that is a piece that I'm weaving through that's half an inch. If you have shorter ones than this, then what I'm going to probably say is you'll want to reduce down to a quarter inch bias size to go in, but I'm doing half inch because these are longer. So I've cut my pieces. So I'm just cutting my pieces like you would normally do for your um, APP. So like that. Okay. So I've just got my pieces cut out. And then I started trying to look immediately for shortcuts. <laughs> so while um, I've always liked to tack rather than glue. In this case, I've realised it's going to be beneficial to have glue at least on these two long sides because it's going to give me some good structure and hold that seam there or that fold there in place while I'm weaving through my... Uh, I'm, I keep going to say bias strip. But it's not cut on the bias, it's straight. This time anyway, we will come back. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so so many places we're gonna go with it, this this year. Another time it might need to be cut on the bias. Right, so they're both on. And then it's up to you how much glue you want to prise off later on. Um, I these guys here are already stuck down both sides. What I was doing last night was I actually tacked these. You can see I did a tack around them and then I decided that was probably great. But if I was going to have it ready to show you and do it with you this morning, then I was going to have to glue. So I'm going to glue this side down. Um, see these points here? Just jumping ahead in case you're wondering. I've left some of these out here because there is another opportunity to, um, instead of appliquing the whole EPP set onto a background, if you did actually want to use them inset into a panel on a bag, and the first bag I would go and have a look at would be just the Melba Shopping Tote, the free download on our website. Um, then there would be an opportunity to actually machine sew these outer seam allowances straight in. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've left that open because I think we could. These guys I'm going to put them all down to show you so that one's down and I'll do the same with this one. So this really is about a play today. I just wanted you to see this and then go okay. I can do what she's doing. Of course I can. I can probably beat Lisa to getting something made with it. <laughs> you would if you did it today um, because I have finished the pattern for uh, Quilter's Life for the Out and About bag which is the upscaled version of our Walker bag and it's taken me a couple of goes. So this is the draft finished, you see the line through here, so Steve's got it all ready to go for me, he's done this one, and I've just got to come through and make the final and give him that photo, so that's my afternoon. So you would beat me if you did it today. Okay, I'll just pop that one down. So, um, while I was doing these as well, I quickly ran out to the shed, the shop shed, and grab some really nice combos just of colours to show you that I think will work nicely with this concept. And you may decide um, not to weave the same fabric through like I am. So for a really dramatic effect you could just use a solid or um, perhaps a black would look really, really nice. 
and if you used a black here then you would sit them over a black background. Hey Rob, Mike's gone. So handy having him around in the house when I'm filming, he'll come back. Um, so you could just, yeah, sit them on a black or use a black as well. I should have done more of this for you, shouldn't I? Handsome, can I please have, I need a bit of black magic. I don't know if there's any in my office, but can you just grab a bolt? out of the shed and I don't know where to tell you it will be yeah. <laughs> because um, every bolt got moved yesterday. If you can pick up a whole shop and move it from one wall five metres across, six, seven metres probably, at least seven metres across the room to another wall and it looks amazing. If, you, if we were open now and you arrived at my door, I would go, don't touch anything. No, it's, it's perfect. You can look but you can't touch because that's how it feels. When you do that sort of thing, um, you just don't want to don't mess with the fabric at all. Good morning, Erica. Ruth, welcome. Good morning. Yolanda is here. Good evening to you. I hope you are really well. Hazel, hello. Oh, I love seeing names that I, that I know people well. Jennifer Campbell, welcome. Marion, welcome. Cheryl, Debbie. Oh, Carleen, see? I always joke about going way back with people I've only met for five minutes, but Carlin and I do go way back, don't we? We do, a long way. That's an exceptional good cup of coffee in my mug. I'm still using my mug that Felicity sent me, my Tassie mug. All right, are we there? I think we're there. Shall I just do, I've just got one more here. I'll just... We sort of go, all right, we won't run the washing machine, the dishwasher, the water pump or anything if we're filming inside. And instead I can just hear birds, just lots of birds outside. So here we go. Um, it, is, it is fraught with danger doing it here um, in some ways because I forgot to ask our neighbourly dairy farmer if he was going to put his, his young um, mothers-to-be back in the paddock next door because when they arrive through there, it's very, very noisy for a day so, because they all get, thank you, they all get very, very excited. So if we do this again inside, I must remember, or we will, to check with him first. But it's not going to be a cow moving morning. I would imagine on a hot day, no. So they will be in the paddock that has the best water supply on the farm, I am sure. And it's not that one. So, okay, so these are ready. Let's, let's just see, we've got all this stuff going on with my coffee. And this is, this is what I've done. You see that there? Okay, so I think, I think that's probably the best view from that. Let me just, let me just give me two seconds. I just want to move that. Maybe, maybe that's a little bit better now that I've yeah, let's run there and let me sorry guys let me just get this out of the way I've got the platform on the sewing machine up here because I'm going to set up here today and do this there we go all right so when you get to putting these together here's what you need to do you need to leave enough room to weave your bias uh, sorry your strip through your iron strip through so what I found with these, if you've got them, and this is just a good example for you as a rule of thumb if you're doing them, is that you need to leave enough room to pop this through. So I know that I need at least half an inch, yeah, because when I folded my one inch piece in um, half, wrong sides into the middle, it's come up to half. So I need to leave half in the middle, and these are one and a quarter. So I have left, and this is, I've measured up the tip or the corner of my ruler with the little angled corner of the, um, on the wrong side, Lisa, <laughs> of the polygon. And I've marked it at three eighths in from each corner. And that leaves me my nice, quite generous, leaves me my nice, quite generous, gap here in the middle that I'm going to pop um, 
my bias weave through, okay? Good morning, Bridget. Um, so that's going to go through there. So now I can grab one of my other ones. Now if you have a look here at this weave, what I have done with the fabric, let's just pop this back over. What I've done with the fabric is I've cut my strip um, for these uh, right across here, or I've cut these all across, progressively across, yes? So you go from, from dark to light in the middle of the bolt, and then it mirror images down the other side. So I had two pieces, and I probably jumped a step on you, didn't I, before? So you sort of want them about two and three quarters. So if you cut strips that are two and three quarters, this will all be set in stone in the pattern one day. <laughs> two and three quarters across the whole thing and chop it in half and use half for one row. And if you want to do another row, half for another row. But you might want to do the whole strip dark to light, light back again and use it down the middle of a table runner or something else. This, there's so many things we're going to do, so many things. Okay, so that is what I have done and then I've cut them the width I need and I've tempted on my desk which didn't really work got sidetracked to keep them all in order so that I go all the way across in the order that I have cut them off the bolt. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So I've just got a few left here to add in and because they have got a little bit or a lot mixed up on my desk but that is the way that they're going to go across there. Yeah. So um, I've been sewing them on now as I go, but I'm going to grab back two of these. Is one of them? No, of course one of them is not the one I marked. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to grab these and put them together. Oh yes, there it is. Got my little marks there. And then grab my needle and thread and we'll do these together. Um, <clears throat> my local clover supplier uh, sent me the wrong thing and I usually I just send it back but um, Carleen is watching, she'll probably back me up on this, I don't know, probably do it. I, I didn't send them back uh, so I wanted him to send me the clover size 10 applique needles because you know I love having both, I have my appliques and then I have my piecing needles and for obvious reasons, softer, um, they, uh, they bend, I can't think of all the right words this morning. They're flexy and so I love it when an applique needle, you want it to bend and you want to be able to use it like as a tool for turning under your seam allowances, that's for another day and we've done it before, love them for that piecing, good tensile strength you want something super strong that you can get your thimble or your hand, your, your finger behind and you can gather up, you know, a good inch and a half, two inches of a piecing seam that you're putting together. So I used both. Then I got these in the mail, which were the sharps. And so I've, I have never been a sharps person. And I, I may have, I don't know that I've poo-hooed them, but I've just skirted around them. So I thought, right, just before I send them back, Let's have a check. And oh my goodness, I think this is it for EPP. These are fantastic because they give you two things. They give you a nice, sharp, fine needle, but they don't bend much. So like the sharp is the combo of both, both things that I love. And I think because of that, they are going to be absolutely perfect for EPP and this sort of work. So serendipity, if you like, um, look at look at this. Is this not the most disgusting example of a masterpiece box you've ever seen? It is no longer the soft collection. It's got a menagerie of bright, soft. It's even got before um, masterpiece did these beautiful plastic boxes. They used to come. Do you remember they used to come on the rubber donut ones? You've probably got one. Um, so it's even got some of the cardboard ones in there from before they switched over to the more durable plastic ones, which are good because you can, yeah, they're really good. So this is a really bad example. This is what they should look like, okay? They should have a beautiful bright box and a beautiful soft box and I should have mine looking all perfect and I don't. 
There you go. <laughs> but these are just, this looks like this because I would have rearranged this box for traveling at some stage to all of the colors that I was using. And I think that's just why I love it. And you can fit your pack of needles in the top and you can fit your micros in. So that is your little one-stop box to take with you. And that's why mine looks disgusting. So I'm kind of apologizing, but I'm not. There's a bit of glue on there from last night. Okay. So I'll just cut a bit of this pretty purple off. You do want to find thread, don't you? Because you're not going to be changing colors across your ombre or whatever you're doing. Um, as I said, this, this is just grassroots, first day. Um, I mean, how far are we going to go with this idea? I don't know. Hi, Jude. There you go. See, Diana at Perkhouse is using sharps. Hello, Sue. Good morning, Kerry. Marie Noel, how are you? You're in the building. Edna, hello. So, you know, you've got, yeah, you're not going to change colour, but, sorry, going back, look, just think about this. Fussy cut, coordinate. Fussy cut, coordinate. Fussy cut, coordinate. Or fussy cut, plain, with a mini coordinate weaving through. Oh my goodness, this is just, this is just the start. Okay going to be good. If I knew how to do, if I knew I was ever going to do a viral um, Instagram, I would hope that this would be it, but I'd rather just share it with you this morning. Maybe we'll do that later, shall we? Like in six months' time. <laughs> when I've got a flash one to show. Um, normal EPP whip stitching together. One thing, and you'll have to let me know, is I think, I'm not sure how it's going to go with paper, English, English paper piecing bits, because I'm just so used to these fantastic EPP templates now, and they're really sturdy. So you're not going, I'm going to say it right now, <clears throat> I have all the merit and understanding and everything for the wash away papers, like the ones that... Um, and that Helen Stubbing uses and stuff. I understand all of that and why they work. But when, when you are doing particularly work like this with, with shapes and things that uh, have need like a really firm edge where they don't touch another one. So when, um, you know, when you do a hexagon flower, the softer wash away papers are fine and they're made from the same they're made from the same stuff, okay, that's polyfuse. That's pretty much what you're working with. So, that we use, of course. So, that's all fine when they're all touching each other because where you sew them all together, they help maintain your shape. But where you're going to do something where you're going to have lots of gaps left um, and you need a really strong, crisp edge, which you do for this, I think you need to need a really good firm paper. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Thompson would roll in her grave. Mrs. Thompson taught me to EPP, to English paper piece. It was a beautiful Scottish lady and I would have been 10, 11. And she would sit me down and we would cut our pieces out of the cereal boxes and the, um, I don't know, the Savoy shaped boxes and things. So I was working with cardboard. Um, that would work, but I don't think my hands would take it anymore. Either the cutting out of the cardboard or piercing the, the thread to tack them onto the cardboard. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we did that. She did double work quilts like that. Incredible. Um, yes. So I think you need something really nice and firm. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I have whip stitched across to my first little mark. And here I'm going to do a couple of little back stitches on that spot and then I do a loop like that so it's like a little knot then so I don't have to cut my thread I'm going to thread my needle underneath my seam allowance so if you've if you've glued that down it's fine because your needle's just going to lift it a little bit and then I'm going to come up again 
on my other mark on the other side of the gap we're leaving and then run my, uh, my little whip stitches across. You know you never get something right when someone's watching? Wow. Guys, 8 o'clock every Sunday morning and you're here. <laughs> it's a bit hard. This is a we use bright apple to have to put some paper over my <laughs> Yeah, Deanna says it's really bright here too. Had to put some paper over my front French door so I can quilt. <sighs> it is it is lovely. Um I just it's we life gets away from us and uh, I was having a chat with Amber this week. If you don't know who Amber is yet, Amber is Philip's Philip's a lovely girl. Uh, lovely girl. I'm going to say girl. I'm going to call Amber a girl. Lovely lady and, and partner. Um, and she is working with me. I think I've mentioned it before. She's working with me on the, our new quilt for this year, which is um, called Colour My World. So it's very different to what I would usually do. And she's doing that one with me. And she's also going to do some of my help me out, just advising me on my social media. You know how you've always got to go to the young ones. I've just finished that off properly on that edge and I'm cutting it. And she said, Lisa, you need to do a reel every week of what's happened at Chandler's Cottage. Take photos. And I just, I just don't get it done. Um, but I have taken a lot of photos this week. Not all of them great, but maybe that's the point, yeah, that it's all flattering is not needed it's got to be real so I need to pop up a, a picture of outside for you this week of all the stuff we've been doing and yeah there you go they're together and we've got this little gap in here there's a little gap ready for our weaving so I um, I just want to add this one on and you've got the idea of it now I'm sure of how it's going to work but I just want to pop this one onto here so that one will go on there, and then that will go off there, and then I will sew these two together, and then they will go on to there. But look, yeah, I can show you how this weave works now. Let's, let's just do it, because I want to show you what happens. Can't you just, I mean, sorry, let me, let me just go back. Can't you see these three together, okay? In, maybe that one's gold. No, no, no. That one's sort of like red, two, three different reds across here. Maybe those two are the same, and this one's different in the middle. And then this is the front of a little purse, and you bring it across, and you take it underneath, and then bring it up, or you can go over the top and in on. Oh, there's just stuff. There's so much we're going to do like that. Okay. So I've got my other little strip here, and this has been cut an inch, right? So. Oh, I've just realised something I need to check. Hang on, let me just check. I've got to measure this and then I'll explain why in a minute. So that, so I cut them at two and a half. <gasps> it fits, it fits, it fits. Okay, sorry. I've just jumped ahead to something I want to show you that I've put together this week. And you're going to be able to do what uh, this combo that I've put together out of it. Okay. Right, let's just iron this. So I am just by hand um, ironing in my raw edges. If you had a half inch bias maker, you could do that as well if you wanted to. Um, uh -huh. Danny at Epiplex is probably going to be really, really happy that she's about to head off teaching for three weeks so that she doesn't get me on the phone every day going, hey, hey, I've come up with another one. Um, she's going to be really wrapped. She's already got enough going on. Oh, I can't tell you some of it because it's a secret. It might or might not be an advent calendar thing. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Right, nearly there. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Ow. So I've popped, um, I've popped up the fabrics 
that I've had, I'm having a plain allergy today, and um, this is PV. This is our ombre PV, but you're going to want to wait until I show you what I've done as well with the ombres. Um, I just thought we needed this whole piece because I want to pop it in and slide it along as well. Okay. Move that back. So when you when you get to this fun fun bit, which you will have all deserved by the time you've put them together, you need to run in an opposite direction with your piece to what you've got in your EPP. So I, you can see that I need to run mine that way. And this one is light to dark so that you get that beautiful effect if you want to do it with the ombres. And so I'll pick up this end because it needs to end up down there. And I don't, I haven't, I haven't felt the need for a fancy, um, a fancy uh, tool to go in here. Uh, Wendy, yeah, no, I've got all the experience of taking the photos. It's all of the, it's, it's the, it's the cataloging and the working out what goes where and what to use. I take 50 photos a day. It's all working out where they're all going to go. Um, it's, and it's more of a, look, I'm going to be honest, it's more of a time thing, which may be where Miss Amber comes in. So um, if she gives me advice one more time and she's so right every time she does, I'll just say, right, that's it. It's all yours. Hey, Jenny Peach, but thank you, Wendy, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Oh, my God, I just made a mountain of bias. Well, there you go. You, has anyone got that... Um, if you still got anyone got the wheels of adhesive bias left in the cupboard, there were ombre ones in those, weren't there? Just like that. You just lift it, you just lift it, just got a little gap, and that's where these plastic ones are really good because they're sturdy and you pull it through. And that's why you've got to make sure that you finish off either side of that gap well because you're going to put a little bit of pressure on it when you push it through. If you um, if you've got a bias, oh, no, oh, what am I trying to say? A tailor's awl or something, and you feel the need to have something um, push through, can you hear that noise? That is gin. There is no reason for you to get in the china cupboard. None. Um, yeah, if you find you've got something, hey, you know what it's going to be. <laughs> you know what it's going to be, don't you? What's, what's that tool going to be that's going to be the best thing to put it through? The good old orange stick. Your manicure stick that we use for um, turning over our seams and gluing them down with the polyfuse. That's going to be it. It's going to be the flat end of one of those again. No fancy tools. Manicure stick. That's going to be it. Right. Jill. Jill, Jill. <laughs> Spinning, oh, I know, and it was, you know, I just got back to a sleep routine after Wednesday, and then this hit. Hey, so you can see, see that? You're going to get the ombre, and it's going to go up the other way. I just, I felt that this was a really good thing to demonstrate how the weave works to work with the ombre across. The only downside to the ombre bit is that when you get... Oh, no, I need to go the other way. Um, when you get to the middle, the colour is the same. So with that, you might jump um, a gap on your ombre. I've just realised I need to do it different, don't I? Because it goes over here. So to get the weave effect even more, I'll go on the alternative one. You don't have to do two rows. I just got carried away and did two rows. You could just have one. <laughs> uh, Bridget is so funny. No, Bridge, no. Yes, new drapes. Yes. Um, new drapes and the wall's body. How could I get rid of the wall? I couldn't get rid of the oak leaf. Come on. The oak leaf is the same. Um, I love it to bits. And it goes with my chinaware and everything. So no, walls are the same. I love it. Didn't touch them. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it goes really well. And um, which I've got uh, like that Villaroy Bosch set. 
that I bought in the years when there was uh, cash flow and maybe not school fees in the in the classic berry in the canisters and it goes, goes perfect in the kitchen with it. Okay, put that down there. All right, and I can show it to you that way. There you go. Look at that. So now it's waving in different directions. <laughs> like a basket wave. All right, so have a look at that as well. Now mine are further apart because I'm using the elongated. If you use the straight octagonal ones, they're going to sit, these waves will sit closer together. So whatever you decide to try it with hexagons, squares, whatever you decide to do, this is going to be um, a, a really different and, 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 and different effect. And you can imagine if I, if I just did this with perhaps two colours, so I alternated between two and then ran a third really strong contrast across the top, Again, you're going to get a really different effect. These now, and we, this, I'm, my head is screaming Melba because a lot of people have used um, Melba in my uh, kaleidoscope pattern. Maybe, maybe that's where we need to go. But they've used it in the tile print. It's triple zero two. If you put that into the search window, they have used it for Mrs. Billings' quilt in, that actually has this pointed shape top and bottom, you, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, um, which is what this looks like before I finish folding down my little bits on the top. So I, I think I need to go, I need to go look at Melba. Any excuse, as Melba starts to wind down, um, which we decided last year, but it, it, it's a slow wind down except for the fans, then um, I, I sort of do this panic, what are we going to make, what are we going to make before one day we can't make it anymore, which I can't even contemplate. It's still a little way away, but I just think that that might look really, really nice. We shall see. We shall see. We'll see where it goes. All right, so that's, that's that ombre there. Now I, and that will continue down. Down that end. Oh, there you go. If I sit that on there, you can see what that's going to look like. Now, uh, so what are we going to do with it? Once we've, once we've made this piece, what are we going to do? So let's just have a look at this little bit again over black because that's going to give us um, a little bit more insight. Oh, I hadn't done this. I just went and got Rob to get the bulk because I thought we should check. Can I fake this just to... I'm just faking one. Faking, sorry, that won't come up on auto text very well. Will it? That one up there. Oh, I can, I can actually fake it. Did I ever tell you it's really for um, Maria and Manuel, who are doing a show? I think they're in France or Spain this weekend. There is an Under the Australian Sun stand set up somewhere in Spain or France this weekend. Um, they used to tell me to fall around laughing because if I was tired with my poor Australian pronunciation on their auto-translate subtitles when they would watch me, if I said gonna instead of going to, it comes up as pistol. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can imagine that translating through from a quilting method there. Look at it on the black. So if I sat it over the top of this and I sewed in all of these little edges into a seam or I can finish it off and have it float, that's going to look really nice. Now, I immediately, when I had this all together, I went, mm, under the Australian sun, sorry, I have to do it. So if I bring that in and this picks up all of the colours that are in that ombre, I really like it. So I could also then and have a look at have a look at the twisted knitting bag. I'm oh, sorry I didn't mark it. Put twisted in and it will bring it up or knitting and it will bring it up in the search window. So then I can do that and I can just have a little slither of the ombre through here or um, maybe 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 the pear. It's called pear. 
um, flowering gum. We, we call it mint sometimes, but it's actually technically pear, which is this beautiful minty apple green. So maybe a little bit of pear flowering gum and then that would sit as a little panel like we do with our twisted knitting bags in there. And again, you could just set this in as a band with our free download shopping tote pattern too. All right. Um, then, if you don't like the idea of just using the ombre, you could get extra of this. I've popped it on special. And you could fussy cut all of your EPP out of different parts from the print, lay them over the top, and just run a band of the apple through as your bias, or perhaps grab a piece of um, precious metals instead, which is that full on beautiful gold, and run that through for a real bling effect. So, yeah. You can tell, can't you? My brain has, this is an infancy stage and it's not every day that you, we're not reinventing the wheel, but we're certainly putting some serious new hubcaps on the wheel. That's what we're doing. We've, we've already got the wheel, but we're gonna really, really upgrade this cart so it can be shown. So big, big um, change of thought process. It doesn't, doesn't happen all the time, but this is, uh, this is not what we were doing in 2024. However, I feel now that we might be doing some. Um, you know too, don't you, that I'm, well, there's a couple of things this year. Um, I'm doing a book with Margaret called Let's Go Dutch, and I'm finalising the projects for that at the moment. So now, every time I do something, I have to go, wait, now, do I want to put this in? Um, it can go in there, or perhaps it's going to be a new inner border or something that I do for the 2025 calendar project, which is being done very differently to the last, for this year and last year. So, yeah. Exciting times, everyone. Okay, so the other ones that I put together. First of all, the thing that I was really excited about just before, I'm probably crushing a heap after this because I was thinking about it a lot last night and then I might need a nap. Um, I put together yesterday some new ombre packs and I only took the photo this morning. So it's a very average photo. I do apologise on the website, but... I will do fancier ones um, today. Sometimes I always say that and then you buy them all and I never get round to it. But I will do these because these will go on for a while. I'm going to bring these over. I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. Oh, you don't need all that stuff in the way. No. I'll leave you the peaches. How about that? <laughs> um, do you remember we had ombre packs? And I think it was... I think it was even before we moved, wasn't it? Uh, because we found out that, do you remember a lot of the gelatos were being discontinued and then they bought a heap of new colours out. So we did some limited edition packs and I think they had eight in each one and some of them were discontinued colours. Yeah, I think so. Do you know what would happen with that? They actually discontinued B, blue, and everyone kicked up, up, a fuss, kicked up such a fuss. They didn't. They did a reprint. So we got to keep the blue. Um, but now we've got all the beautiful new colours in, which we've been using for a while. I thought I should go back and do some packs. The other thing too is that I'm changing... I don't like it when people change names on things that already exist. I'm a bit... You know, sometimes I think, why? Why change it? But I'm actually doing it. So our applique essential packs are now going to be called um, stash essentials. Because... They're not just for applique, they're for so many different things and I want to do lots of other things like this and other stuff this, with them over this year and next year and I thought, it's just wrong. They're not just for applique. So we're going to change our applique essentials to stash essentials, which is really what we are doing with them is stashing them and we need that little bit of colour. So these are our new gelato stash essentials and I've done two different colourways and they've got ten in each one. So... It's still a really bad shot. <laughs> There's still so much stuff in there. Okay. So this is the pack. And this is the photo that's on the website at the moment. But I will make it all nice and shiny. 
and tidy. It was literally taken on this cutting board in front of me this morning. So this is the pack. And, and the reason I need to take two or three shots for this, as you well know, you only get to see this bit along the top. You don't get to see all of this underneath. So I need to get them back out in the shop shed and lay them all the way out so that you can see what I'm showing you now. So this is 10 ombres, aren't they just, I mean, this is it, this is the, the color wheel tenfold. So you've got 10 in this one. So what I was looking at before, if you wanted to try what I'm talking about with any of these strips, you will get your full row of your EPP and you'll get your one inch strip. So any of these are going to give you just one strip not the whole tent is going to give you a chance to try that out if you want to join me and try that out. This yellow I haven't had in for ages, um, this S, I love it. It sort of, it sings to me wattle, corn, um, lemons, it's, it's going to get used a lot. So that's that pack. This one is called Winter Autumn and then <coughs> This is winter spring. So you can see it's a little deceiving because you go, oh, it's not really, that's a bit peachy and stuff up that end. You need to open the whole thing out to get a real idea of what's in here. So this top one here, beautiful, beautiful, soft pink. And that one goes through to mauve. Look at them. And this one again, it's got the 10. I like, I like this. A lot. I think this would make a great background. Um, we've, obviously we've got them all on the bolt by the half meter as well but there you go. So those two are up now and these are not going anywhere in a hurry. If they're out of stock for a little you know for a couple of weeks it would only be because we need to restock the whole pack and we might have to wait on one to come in but these will be um, around for a long time and I do you know the the project for um, the 2025 calendar and I know we've only just started 24 but there are quite a few of these ombres being used because it just gives us you know infinite color shades to use across the whole project. Z it is it is a, Z it is a it's a project or it's a projects um, it's uh, yeah it's gonna be fun all right so there you go and why? Why am I talking about it now? Because I actually am having a few things specifically designed, maybe printed for 2025, so I have to start in my spare time this early. So that's, I'm sorry, we, we, I need you to focus on Sunday and I'm talking about next year, so I'll stop. <clears throat> All right, there's another one, there's another new one too. Now this one I actually made up couple of weeks ago I had Steve Putnam when he was down. This is beautiful. I haven't got to the project for these yet but I thought I'll pop them up. It may just be what you're looking for and I will I will get to them. Um, I sort of want to do something Christmassy with this so I'm not quite there probably next month or the month after we'll start talking about long-term Christmas stuff or, or actually uh, well what I've done today Yeah, yeah. All right, this is our new winter, I think I called it winter night or something like that. I was trying to be creative. Again, just taking the picture this morning. This pack has got, can you see that? They are all black, gray and white with silver. So if you needed a really different look, um, for Christmas or perhaps for a fella for Christmas, for a Christmas stocking. Maybe we'll come back and that snowflake demo strippy one we're going to do, we'll do with these. But they're yummy, yummy, Regent, yes. There's a little bit of Jolie Bijou, Pearl Essence, Regent Fusions again, Melba Fans, Shimmer, Precious Metals. Oh, can you look, see, if you alternated like that, <gasps> with that in the EPP and then ran the silver as the weave. Holy schmoly. 
that may be happening. Um, then pearlescence again, I love pearlescence. It's like fairy frost with a, with a clear identity. <laughs> As in fairy frost is less like the mushy, you know, the luster over the top, whereas this gives you the luster but with a definite pattern on it. Um, and then that's the white with the silver from Shimmer as well. Remembering Shimmer is um, also on its way out and we try to buy it. all of it. <gasps> Sue Singer says, hi from a super rainy California. Oh, we make it up to seven inches. Hang on, let's do the conversion. What are we on about? Not 20, but 18 mil. Oh, what? That's huge. 180 mil. Oh my goodness me. So that's massive. You're up with Australian floods with that as well. Because we are. We here in Australia pride ourselves on a country that is so big and so vast and so diverse that we can be doing bushfires in Western Australia. At the same time, we're doing cyclones in Queensland, and just to you know, just to finish it off, some nice little, some some nice little massive, devastating floods in New South Wales. We can do it all in the one weekend. So um, we feel for you, Chris. I've got to go. Running late. We'll watch later. Sure. At a quilt retreat, so can only watch. We'll rewatch and listen later. Oh, Elizabeth, you have a fantastic time, won't you? Absolutely. Hello, Carol Pro. You good? Right, so that's the winter pack. So I've popped them up. I think I've got about nine of those. Um, I think we can repack. Oh, do you know, I'd have to have a look. Um, if, if they're really popular and when we do a project with them and we think, yeah, which I might with the EPP, then I will try and restock some of these to things, do some more of them. Um, this is a beautiful new thing that came in from Clothworks. And probably out of everything that I'm showing you, this is going to be the wowser to use with this method, with, it, with the ombre that I've popped with it. So, there you go. <laughs> I'm just seeing on the delay my raised eyes over the top of the bowl. Any, any chance that Facebook used that for the freeze frame. I bet you they will. Sometimes I think they just go out of their way to find the most uncomplimentary screenshot to use. Anyway, there you go. Beautiful. It's lovely. It is digitally printed with metallic look, little dots. Really bright. So just to tickle your your colour taste buds, this is 903. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? So that is in that's in the summer autumn pack. So if you grab the summer autumn pack, you're going to have that. Um, I haven't quite got it in the shop. There you go. Look, Woo. gorgeous. Let me look. I've destroyed these packs now. I'll have to repack them. Or oh, what a shame! One of them would have to be mine. Let me find it in here, and then I can lay it out for you. There, there you go. Yum. That wakes you up on a Sunday morning, doesn't it? Look at that. Yummy. Okay, then, then, if you think, oh, I've got someone bright in my life I need to make that for, please, uh, this is a warning, put your sunglasses on. You ready? There's your zip. Now, you could, you could, if you really wanted to, just run a black zip if you were doing something with a zip in it, but that's just out there. Um, I've tagged the flower pools, but also Yvonne Collins, and you should have your rainbow flowers too. I did pop them in the mail. They're not far away if you don't. Um, but I really liked, I know it sounds really weird, but I really liked the snowflake ones with this, and I think it's because of the shape of the flowers. Have a close look up when you have a look on the website, but I really like those with that. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. So... Um, yes, that ombre is 903. I mean, you could buy half a meter and use it for the, you know, for your lining or pockets or whatever, and then use it for your EPP. I don't know, but I just had to show you how good that it looked with that zip um, and that beautiful new fabric. So that's that one. I'll move that out of the way. And then what was the other one? Oh, yes, we had in. Um, I've got a blowfly in here now. 
just to make finish off the whole summer Aussie morning, you know, sound effects. Okay, this is so this is sort of more subtle. This is MCP, which I've tapped. So that's MCP there. And if I pull it again, just trash my pack. It's here, I know it's here, it's here. You know what, I'm not gonna trash the pack, I'm just gonna leave it, because I really need to put that pack back together. Okay, there you go. So that's that one, and it sort of goes lilac-y, purple, and peach orange through the pale peach. And I know I've shown you this one before, but just think of it in light of um, this idea this morning to pop it with Tina's Garden. Now this one is still on special, so and it's a beautiful print, but those two together with a piece of black, really, really nice. And I just think this was such a beautiful, unusual coloured fabric. And then to find this ombre that goes perfectly with it was just, it was a real treat. So um, they go really nicely together as well so there you go fun I just I, I just I couldn't wait I needed to show you this concept and where are we going to take it I don't know but I don't think it's always going to stay straight I think it might curve as well and um, it will work with I can't see why it won't work with hexagons Hexagons, octagons, these polygons. I'm struggling at the moment with pentagons, but I know we'll work it out. That's probably where we need to go to a curve. It's going to work with Dresden wedges. It's going to work with so many different things. And for ages, I've been wanting to do a weave um, with you, like a basket weave with fabric strips and ribbons and everything to put on a bag flap and everything. And now I'm thinking, okay, I've just taken it. On a completely different direction so all of those ideas <laughs> like just go on the back burner for now and we'll start playing with um, this instead anyway so I've popped these are all under today's uh, tag for you um, if you're on a quilter's life I will that's where I'm going next is onto that bag and I need to show you I still haven't shown you my quilted blocks um, for the geisha and I um, have designed all the butterflies and I'm just, I, there was one that wasn't quite right so that's just being tweaked at the moment for me. He need, see this, what I'm doing? He was too, he needed to look like he was flowing a little bit more. So that's being fixed up and then we'll do our butterflies this week. So it's, it's all good. And then preserving wise, please do have a look. It just, just humour me. I really went on a show and tell journey at the start of the bait demo on YouTube. Um, I'll pop up a link to it on Facebook today. But um, so we've been working on a lot of our preserve pop collection ready for um, for selling when we have open days. And if you're a Quilters Life member, yes, you should have been given the date yesterday. Got a little bit out of control, so I will pop up that date for you. It will, our first open is only for Quilters Life members, so I will pop that date up for you. Um, what I'm going to say is, if you want to come first time, you better join because I'm. There's a cutoff very, very soon. You have to be a member by a certain date. So I'm just being wicked now. But uh, yeah, first one as promised for Quilters Life members. So please do have a look at what we've been up to this week and my excuse for not doing a lot of sewing or perhaps didn't pop in and say hi as much as I should have this week. That's why I have a lot of tomatoes to turn into passata as well this week. Um, this one is beautiful and this came in this week and I wanted to show it to you the second version. So this is on a quarter's life again. This bag that I'm making today we're doing it as just a straight up with fabric first but then we're going to do it again as an advanced version with some multi textile media um, applique on the front panel. I was waiting for this bulk to come in, so I've uh, set aside the yardage I need to do kits for my club members if they actually want to um, order a kit to go with the demo and the pattern in the club. But the rest of it I have popped up online. It's it's really really lovely. I'll just it's very unusual, beautiful um, fern print from Hoffman. So I'll just just give you a wide look. It's really lovely. It's you know how sometimes you get that olivey green colour 
that it's not brown and it's not green. This is that with the yellow. I think I think when we did Michelle Hill's oh sorry when we did Michelle Hill's quilt we had a couple of yellow greens like this. I could be wrong, but I love this color where it's not yellow and it's not green. So I'm going to um, use this in that project and. It's got this lovely sort of khaki green, bluey green color down here too. Really nice. Um, as I said, I've set aside what I need for my kits, but I did pop it up because I know I've got a few of you like Maria and that that love to make your clothes as well. And I've got a palm leaf summer dress, just one of those Carolyn Morgan ones or something at the moment, which is really handy now that it's heating up. And if you do like a little shift dress or a top, I just thought it'd be really nice so anyway I've popped the rest of that up but it's beautiful if you needed that coordinating yellow green color to go with it it is out there in Northcote shadows I just uh, didn't go through and find the match for it this morning so if you needed something perhaps the darker green a blue green there's an olive green in there or this yellow just let me know and I can uh, do a match for you as well okay so that's it I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. If it is hot where you are and you need to stay inside um, and you need a bit of white noise in the background, you've got YouTube stuff to watch um, and uh, you've got that on. You've got demos if you're in the Quilters Life that you can watch from me. Oh, I'm sure you'll find something really good or something to listen to, like my playlist that I popped up in the club the other day. So. Have yourselves an absolutely fantastic Sunday and a great start to the week, won't you? And um, I hope you've got your to-do list ready for everything that you want to achieve this week. If not, get that written up. Hang on, wait, we've got to go back. In Costa Rica right now, we are using ombre fabrics with the heart quilt on Wednesday. Oh, oh what's that? Why they look so... That's why they look really quirky, different, amazing, because they're done with an ombre. There you go. Thanks, Diana. Love it. Okay. Have a great day, won't you? If you've got any questions, um, maybe outside without the phone for a bit, so you probably best email me at info at Chandler's Cottage. Otherwise, I'll be in from tomorrow if you need to give me a buzz. All right. Have a fantastic day. Thank you again so much for getting up early to have a cup of with me or perhaps staying up late, okay? And I'll see you next week, all right? Thanks so much, bye.